Hello, everybody. Yes, I am still under the weather. Yes, I still have this thing on my face, but this probably has something to do with the fact that I'm filming multiple videos in one day. You don't get over the weather in 45 minutes. But anywho, my point is, bear with me. Today I'm covering one of your most requested topics, which is how to write a book while going to college, or working a full-time job, or being a parent, without slowly driving yourself insane. Before I was a full-time author and YouTuber, I was a stockbroker and then an accountant who just so happened to be writing a book. And that's how it is for most of us. A vast majority of writers at least start off working a real job and writing their book at night and on the weekends. And let me tell you, it's a bitch. But hey, I've done it, other writers have done it, and I'm here to break down how you can do it as well. This topic is sponsored by the amazing team over at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled to the brim with over 17,000 classes in creative writing, design, marketing, business, you name it, they got it. I myself have a class on Skillshare all about how to market yourself as an author, and I absolutely love their platform. And you guys know that if Skillshare's here, that means you're not walking away from this video empty-handed. Stick around until the end for details, because we got you covered. On top of that, my fantasy novel, The Savior's Champion, is available for pre-order. I'm hosting a massive pre-sale giveaway, and I will be announcing the third winner for that at the end of this video. We got goodies out the ass. It's a little gross. But first, I'm breaking down the 10 ways you can make time for writing despite having a cluttered, chaotic life. Number one, accept that it's hard. I talk about this stuff with a lot of people, and the number one response is, but it's so hard. I don't know if you know this, but writing a book is hard, period. Add a full-time job or school or both on top of that, and it's batshit. But millions of people still manage to do it all the time because hard and impossible are not the same thing. And think about it, what great things in life are easy? Besides pizza and Taco Bell. All accomplishments involve struggle, so you just gotta decide right now if this is a struggle you're willing to endure. Number two, be realistic. You're juggling multiple burdens at once, so you need to be realistic about the fact that your writing journey is going to take a long time. If your six-year-old is home with the flu, your writing isn't gonna get done that day. If you've got midterms to study for, your writing isn't gonna get done that week. It's important to hold yourself to strict standards. I always say, if you want writing to be a career, then you gotta treat it like a career. But for God's sake, don't flunk out of school or get fired because of it. It's not paying your bills yet. And if your writing does take a while, which it will, cut yourself some slack. It took me five years to write and publish my first novel while working a full-time job, but it took me half the amount of time to do the same thing as a full-time author. Shit's gonna move slower than you'd like. It's not ideal, but you're working with what you got. Number three, communicate. A lot of writers don't like telling people about their work, and that's cool. You don't have to shout it from the rooftops. But if you don't at least tell your friends and close family, how do you expect them to respect your writing time? They're not gonna understand why you're not available to hang out as often as you used to be. And even when you do tell people, guess what? They might not give a shit. So depending on the circumstance, you might have to communicate your standards firmly. Like I said, I won't be able to go clubbing with you tonight. Please respect my decision, Grandma. Let the people in your life know your needs so they can help accommodate you during your writing journey. Number four, make reasonable sacrifices. If you work eight hours a day, I've got good news for you. There's still 16 hours left to write. The bad news is some of those hours are accounted for, like for eating, sleeping, general hygiene, and basically living a semi-tolerable existence. If you want to squeeze writing a book into those 16 hours, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. Do you watch 20 shows on Netflix? Now you're only gonna watch two. Do you grab a drink with the boys once a week? Make that once a month. If this sounds extreme, you are in for a rude awakening, because I haven't hung out with friends in years. What are friends? Seriously, what are they? It sounds shitty until you consider the fact that I turned my passion into a career and I'm living my dream. Take a look at your habits and be honest about what's more important to you, writing your book or binge watching The Walking Dead. The more meaningful tasks should probably take up more of your time, don't you think? Number five, keep a schedule. The key to managing a million obligations at once is to keep yourself organized. Some people like calendars, some like planners, I myself am a list lady. You know those quarterly goal videos I put out? I created that system back in college so I could help manage my passions alongside my full workload at school and at my job. And it's not just quarterly goal lists. I keep a monthly to-do list, a weekly to-do list, 
and a daily to-do list. This may sound like a lot, but I accomplish a shit ton. Seriously, I am on fire. And I seriously could not handle the workload of writing a book on top of, I don't know, going to school or being a mom if I didn't have lists to keep me on track. Oh, and by the way, if something's on your to-do list, do it. You wrote it there for a reason, after all. Unless your house is on fire, or your balls are on fire, or pretty much anything is on fire, stick to your schedule. You'll be glad you did. Number six, be strategic. Sometimes you're gonna be in situations where you have the time to work on your writing, but you may not have the energy, the proper resources, or the ability to write. When I was an accountant, sometimes I'd get my work done and I'd have a long stretch of downtime. It sounds like the perfect opportunity to write, except for the fact that I'd probably get fired for writing about violence and bloodshed on the company computer. Instead, I'd read articles about the publishing industry. I'd read blogs about plotting and structure. If you're driving, you could be listening to audiobooks within your genre. What if you're home from work after a hard day and you have the time to write, but you just don't have the energy? Do you have the energy to connect with other writers on social media instead? Don't let any free time go to waste. Be strategic about every opportunity you have and make it work. Number seven, compartmentalize. Sometimes your windows of opportunity are really small. A half hour in study hall, a 10 minute work break. When this happens, break up your tasks into smaller chunks and shove them right into those breaks. This is one of the things I love about Skillshare. All of their classes are divided into smaller parts, 10 minutes at a max, and so it's really easy to get them to fit into your schedule. You can literally start and finish an entire writing course during your breaks at work. And not only does compartmentalizing your to-do items get things done a lot quicker, but it also makes them a lot less overwhelming. It's so much easier to take an hour-long Skillshare class knowing you only have to watch it in 10-minute intervals versus having to sit through the whole whole thing at once. Break up your goals into easily digestible parts and they'll go down a lot smoother. Number eight, implement rewards. Sometimes, especially if you've been working all day, the last thing you wanna do is work some more. That's when you gotta treat yourself. If I finish writing this chapter, I get to reward myself with a slice of cake or a slice of cheese or a slice of cheesecake. I've also found ways to reward myself with more work but it's fun work. If I finish my outline, I get to reward myself with a writing class on Skillshare. If I finish these line edits, I get to reward myself by binge watching Jenna Moresi's channel. Hi there. Find ways to provide a light at the end of the tunnel. That way the journey won't feel like such a fucking nightmare. Number nine, find a cheer squad or a drill sergeant or both. Back in my early writing days, I was surrounded by people who would say things like, you don't have to work today if you don't want to. Taking a break is healthy. I don't need health advice. I need someone who's going to hold me accountable while I write this fucking book. Everyone needs people in their corner to cheer them on. Yes! Finish that chapter! I believe in you. And everyone also needs an asshole to whip them into shape for their own good. Quit your whining and get to typing. Less lip flapping, more keyboard tapping. I want to see those fingers bleed. But Jenna, I don't have supportive friends. What if I told you the internet is a thing that exists and you're utilizing it right now? You can easily meet other writers in forums and on social media. And I see students in my Skillshare class connecting with one another and encouraging each other constantly. Constantly. These people are out there, you just gotta find them and hand them some pom-poms or a whip. And number 10, take advantage of resources. If you've got a full-time job, I'm guessing you don't have the time to enroll in a creative writing course at your local college or visit every writing event in your neighborhood. Good thing you don't have to do any of those things in order to become a successful author. Take advantage of the resources around you. There are libraries filled with books about agents and publishing. There are blogs and YouTube channels devoted to the craft of writing, like this one right here. And there are thousands of classes classes on Skillshare taught by New York Times bestsellers, career authors, self-starters, and entrepreneurs. This is about working smarter, not harder. Your time is already limited, so utilize the resources available to you that most easily fit into your schedule. So that's all I got for you today. Just kidding, there's more. You came for prizes, and I'm here to give you prizes. The Save Your Champion is currently available for pre-order and you guys have been gobbling it up, which is amazing. I am so grateful. I told the folks at Skillshare about my pre-sale giveaway and they were super excited about it. 
and wanted it on the action. Skillshare is a great platform for learning, especially for creators like you and me. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes, and it's way more affordable than most learning platforms. I believe an annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. However, Skillshare is giving away one year of Skillshare Premium for free to a lucky winner who pre-ordered the Savior's Champion and entered my pre-sale giveaway. And the winner is this person. Congratulations, thank you so much for supporting TSC, and I know you are going to love Skillshare. To everyone else, I'm not trying to leave you hanging. Cyborg Queen don't play that shit. Skillshare is offering two months of Skillshare Premium for just 99 cents to the first 500 people who sign up. I've got the link listed below. Get in on that shit. That is two months worth of access to tens of thousands of classes for less than a dollar. A huge thank you to Skillshare for supporting the Savior's Champion and for always doing right by my audience. And a huge thank you to you guys for rallying behind my channel and my writing. With that said, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Mondays and Wednesdays. And if you wanna be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell. If you wanna read an awesome book and have access to tons of prizes, pre-order The Savior's Champion and enter my pre-sale giveaway. All the links are below. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and of course you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye.